Did you know that one of the world's landmark scientific achievements began right here at this public park near Makri Circle in Bangalore? And no, it is not this watchtower built 450 years ago by Kempe Gowda. I'm looking for a scientific marker somewhere here. I think I found it. There's an inscription here. Let's uncover it. It says GTS, which is the Great Trigonometric Survey of India. And below that it says B and M, which stands for benchmark. And this circle is the benchmark altitude above mean sea level of this spot. This is a scientific marker inscribed on the steps of this ancient Kempe Gowda tower. This is the highest point in Bangalore, 952 meters above mean sea level. It is the very summit. It's a peak Bangalore moment. An audacious project to map the entire Indian subcontinent began here in the year 1800. The project took over 100 years. It created the largest and most accurate map of its time. It helped answer the question, what is the shape of the earth? Is it a sphere or is it flattened at the poles? And is the very foundation of the GPS linked maps that we use even today. Let's go to the Science Gallery Bengaluru to find out more. Oh, wow. Here you get a real feel for the kind of instruments used, the original maps that were drawn, and also some of the actual books with you know, the original text and the stories and the reports of the survey. Let's start with the school trigonometry lesson. If I had a point A and another point B, and I drew a straight line to join them, and then for standing here, I looked in the distance and I took a point C and then I joined this line and this line and I've got myself a triangle. And if I know this length and I know this angle, just from these three pieces of information, this length, angle A and angle B, I'm able to calculate angle C as well as the lengths of these two sides. And so basically, I can compute all the sides of the triangle. This method of surveying called triangulation is useful for short distances. But if you are trying to take a long distance, say 30, 40 miles, it is not flat anymore because the curvature of the earth has come in. And so all the rules of Euclidean geometry fail. So how do you measure a large continent like India using surveying techniques when there's a huge curvature of the earth involved? That is the magic of the mathematics behind the great trigonometric survey. First, we need to measure a starting reference line called the baseline. They used a long chain like this to measure an absolutely straight line of about 11 kilometers from where Ramamurti Nagar is today to Agram. And then they looked at a hill in the distance, just like the Makri Circle hill we were on. And then they would use an instrument like this. This is an altitude and azimuth instrument where you can measure the altitude above sea level and you can also measure the azimuth, which is the deviation from the north. It took them eight weeks of meticulous hard work to measure that first baseline. And then they used an instrument like this to triangulate the first triangle. The man who started the survey, William Landon, was an incredible guy. He wanted to help the world of science understand the shape of the world. And he believed that by mapping the entire subcontinent by triangulation, he could help in that process. William Lambden was an interesting character. He was part of the army that stormed the fort of Sri Rangpatna in May 1799 that led to the fall of Tipu Sultan and Mysore. Now that the British controlled most of South India, he saw the scientific potential for mapping the entire peninsula and so he sought funding for a trigonometric survey of the conquered territories which evolved into the geographical survey of the southern peninsula and eventually in the year 1818 was called the Great Trigonometric Survey of India. The original survey was commissioned in the year 1800 and he began his field work in Bengaluru in October 1800. But why did they choose Bangalore as the starting point? Because Bangalore's location is absolutely perfect. If you look at the map of India and you had to fold India in half, Bangalore is actually on that line. So if this is the line that bisects India, you have Kanyakumari, Bangalore, Delhi and Masuri. This is actually a longitudinal line roughly 78 degrees east, which was considered the great arc of the trigonometric survey. And Bangalore's location on that arc made it the ideal location to begin measurements. And within Bangalore, he chose a particular place called Doddagunta which, as you know, is near Cox Town within the MEG campus as the dead center 
on the great arc of India. And the first line that he drew, the Bangalore base line, had to be absolutely accurate. And so this chain had to be absolutely level, took on absolutely level ground, because if there was even a small error of even a centimeter in these measurements, that error would get magnified into the triangle. They had to even account for the heat that might expand this chain. And so the study had to be really, really accurate, inch perfect, as they say. The place we were at, Makri Circle, which had the tower, it was called the Mantapam Station. And if you look closely, this is the original map of the original triangle. So this is the base at Dodagunta, and this is the vertex of the triangle at the Mantapam Station. So this was the original triangle from where they began. When they were satisfied that they had established an accurate baseline along the Dodagunta Meridian, or the Great Arc of India, they went all the way to Fort St. George in Madras, established sea level at the marina beach there and began triangulating a series of triangles all the way from east to west till they reached Bangalore at 952 meters above sea level and then they went further west till the western ghats where they went almost to 1700 meters and then down to the coast near Mangalore at sea level again and you know what the sea level that they had measured at the beginning and the sea level that they had measured here was off by a difference of just 8 feet. It was an incredibly accurate exercise. And this was the very foundation of the Great Trigonometric Survey of India. This was also the first time they accurately measured the distance from Madras to Mangalore and it turned out to be 360 miles. Till now, everyone believed that the width of the peninsula was 400 miles. The actual instrument that they used was much larger than this. It was called the theodolite. It weighed half a ton and required 12 people to actually move it and they lugged it across India. And they had to go in absolutely straight lines through jungles, through rivers, through malarial swamps. In fact, more people died in this project than in many wars. Starting from Bangalore and over the next 70 years, all of India was mapped. It was an inch perfect map, stunning in its accuracy. And then a brilliant Indian mathematician, Radhanath Sikdar, was taken on and his job was actually to measure the heights of the Himalayas above sea level. And then he discovered that there was one peak out here that was the tallest that had ever been recorded and he numbered it as peak number 15. The British decided to name this peak in 1856 after George Everest who had left India in 1843, but after leading this project for over 20 years. There is a very interesting anecdote, maybe it's apocryphal, that the height they measured was exactly 29,000 feet. And then the surveyor general, Andrew Waugh, said, no, that looks too precise. And so he changed the measurement to 29,002 feet. And that's what it remained in official records for many years, till several years later, with advanced measurement techniques, they established that the height of this tallest mountain was 29,028 feet. What's incredible to me was that this study measured the height of this mountain from a great distance using only triangulation, without the benefit of GPS or aerial photography. Not only had no scientific undertaking of this scale been undertaken anywhere in the world, the identification and discovery of the world's tallest peak was a bonus. It's almost like the icing on the cake. And this identification of Everest as the tallest peak set off a flurry of expeditions of people trying to climb to the top. And it took 97 more years before Hillary and Tenzing finally made it. Now, like in any scientific project, there is always constant improvements in methods and techniques. So Lambden's original baseline served well for 67 years, but in 1867, they decided to create a new baseline. And remember the point Makri circle that we had visited? That was the vertex of the first triangle. Well, now in the revised baseline, it became one of the end points for the new baseline in 1868. So let's go back to Makri circle and take a look at that. I'm literally getting the goosebumps standing here. This is a piece of scientific history. So when the team came back to Bangalore in 1868, that is 68 years later, they discovered that the old original baseline had been blocked by a railway track that we'd constructed across it. So they decided to create a new baseline at this very hill, at this point. As you can see here, the Bangalore baseline, the southwest end, built in 1868. This was actually the point where they would have put a marker to take the measurements. And so the altitude and azimuth instrument or the theodolite, any of these instruments that were used in the GTS would have been brought to a place like this and would have been used to make a measurement from this very point to another point somewhere far away in the distance. And guess what? 
This place is barely two kilometers from the Science Gallery Bengaluru. So on your way to the gallery, you can stop at Makri Circle, come to this park to see one of the foundations where the world's scientific mapping actually began. So the next time you navigate using a GPS map, remember it was an Indo-British science and tech startup from Bangalore 225 years ago where it all began. There are so many more fascinating aspects of this project. So why don't you just come to the Science Gallery Bengaluru to find out more. Isn't that amazing? From Mount Makri to Mount Everest, a peak Bangalore moment. <laughs>